let's go ahead and review the properties for exponents. If you have two bases that match and they're being multiplied together, you can add the exponents. When you have two exponents and they're being divided, you can subtract exponents. If you have two factors raised to an exponent, you can distribute that exponent through to each factor in parentheses. If you have a fraction raised to an exponent, you can distribute that exponent through to both the numerator and the denominator. If you have a power of a power, you can multiply the power down. Anything to the zero power is one. When you have a negative exponent and you want it to be positive, you simply shift it across the fraction bar and change the sign of the exponent. In this situation, it's the same idea. You have a negative exponent and you want to make it positive, so you shift it across the fraction bar and change the sign of the exponent. With negative exponents outside a fraction, you can, instead of distributing the negative through to each piece and then having to shift one base down and one base up, you can simply flip the fraction over and change the sign of the exponent. It's no longer negative, it's positive. So let's go ahead and use these properties when simplifying expressions. To simplify, we have to remember that order of operations is still important. We've just added some stuff to it. We're going to look at these problems and notice that it's still multiplication. The only thing is we have a power raised to a power, so we must distribute those exponents down to each exponent inside parentheses before we can move on. 4 to the second, x to the negative 10, y to the fourth, z to the second. All multiplied to 2 to the 4th, x to the 16th, y to the negative 8th, z to the 12th. Remember, a power raised to a power means you have to multiply your exponents down. At this point, we're going to simplify anything we can and remember that numbers are multiplied together and the bases have to match for the exponents to be added. 4 to the second is 16 and 2 to the fourth is 16 again. Notice that this base and this base match, the y bases match as well, and so do the z bases. So we're going to go ahead and add those exponents together and we're going to get x to the negative 10 plus 16, y to the fourth plus negative 8, z to the 2 plus 12. At this point, I can go ahead and multiply the 16's together and I get 256 x to the 6th, y to the negative 4, z to the positive 14. Notice that this is my no only negative exponent, so I'll go ahead and shift that to the denominator and I'll have my final answer. 256 x to the 6th, z to the 14th, all over y to the positive 4. And that's my final answer. On example 2, we have a fraction, so we're going to simplify the numerator and the denominator separately. 
simplifying by distributing the exponents through, we get 2 to the negative fourth, x to the negative eight, y to the positive twelve. Distributing the negative two through, we get times x to the negative eight, y to the positive twelve, all over x to the negative twelve, y to the positive eight. At this point, we should notice that we do indeed have negative exponents throughout the fraction. We're going to go ahead and shift those across the fraction bar now so that we have no negative exponents. We'll now have x to the twelfth, y to the twelfth, times y to the twelfth, all over two to the negative four x, oops, two to the positive four x to the positive eight x to the positive eight y to the eighth. Simplifying this further, we will get x to the twelfth, y to the twenty-fourth, over two to the fourth, which is sixteen, x to the sixteenth, y to the eighth. Reducing out my common factors, my final answer is y to the sixteenth over sixteen x to the fourth. And that is my final answer.